and welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. You know, my guest today is interesting because we were talking in the green room and we have the same thoughts about special needs children or special needs adults. Um, we have to learn that they're really just people like us and we're not better than them. God knows, I can tell you, I... Most of the special needs people that I know are far superior to me in a lot of ways. With me is Heaven Spencer, and it's Open Seas Learning Academy. Yes, sir. I try to get that at the beginning because uh, I'm old and I would forget. <laughs> <laughs> I would forget. Okay, what is Open Seas? So Open Seas Learning Academy is a private tutoring program that we do, uh, but we operate like a school program. So we're open 8.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. We do all the basic classes, but we try and structure it so that it works for kids on their individual levels. Okay. <clears throat> and from what we're talking, a majority of the children are on the spectrum. Yes, sir. Most of our kids are special needs of some sort, a lot of behavioral issues, a lot of kids with autism. So how long have you been working with children like this? Um, for about 10 years now. Okay, and you started because? Because my son was diagnosed when he was three, actually just before his third birthday. Okay. I, I, I don't have a child like that. My daughter was fine, even though she was preemie. But I have met some of the most amazing people with autism. Yep. Okay. And Down syndrome. They are some of the most lovable, sweet people you will ever, ever meet. <laughs> Well, mine's 13 now, so he's got an attitude. But. Oh, uh, but we get that because we have we have a guy that works here, and he's real, he's not no maliciousness in them, but if if you give him a job he doesn't want to do it, he ain't doing it. Okay, that's just how he is. Okay, um, but we gave him a job to do. We taught him how to do it, and what would normally take him when he started about four hours takes him maybe an hour, two hours. We feel kind of guilty because he gets paid by the hour. So he was making a lot more when he didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> okay, so you start this school, uh, and we'll call it, a, well, she starts this academy because it's really not a school school. We're not a school. We're not an accredited school. Right, okay. And you started it, obviously, because y your, your roots are within this. Right. Okay. How many kids are in a class? So uh, it depends on the class right now. Um, in our lowest class, um, which they're working on kindergarten, pre-K, up to starting like first grade kind of skills, there are currently five children in that classroom. Um, and the age ranges um, are different because like I said, it's not set up like a typical school program right. is. Um, so the kids in that classroom, our oldest is um, 16 and our youngest is six in that classroom right now. Wow. Um, and then in our next classroom, there are kids who are working on first through like fourth grade kind of skills, all the way up through multiplication, division, um, beginning chapter books, those kinds of things. Um, there's six kids in that classroom right now. The oldest in that classroom is 13, and the youngest in that classroom is eight. And then in my classroom, because I also teach a class, I work with the kids who are working on high school and um, middle school curriculum. Um, so I currently have three in my classroom, and the oldest is 15, and the youngest is my son, and he's 13. So <coughs> I guess you teach one class, and you have two other teachers to yep. teach the other classes. Yep. The middle <coughs> class is actually taught by my husband. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have this school. You started it a couple years back? Yes, sir, three years ago. Okay, and you found a niche that worked for you. When a kid graduates, and I, I kind of know this is going to be a hard question to answer, but what's the f what do you feel when you finally see a kid graduate? So I, I'm always excited when kids get to graduate and when they move on from our program. We actually just had a girl who turned 18 and mom graduated her from our program. And it was sad to see her go, but I was excited because, you know, she's moving on. She's going to do some adult curriculum kind of programs and things. And so I was excited to get to see that. You know, <coughs> because of the hours that you're open, you almost help the ch you definitely help the children, 
but you help the parents too. Right. Okay, because, and I, I'm using the wrong word, but it almost becomes a camp. It does. Okay, so that kids, so that the parents, if they're not sending their kids to regular school, can go to do their job and go to work, just like if the kid was in regular school. Absolutely. How long are the classes? So each class is about 45 minutes. But like I said, we're open during the day, 8.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, and during days when kids are off from school, we do camp days. Um, so like this Friday when all the kids in St. Lucie are off from um, school for Good Friday, we're actually going to do, um, we're going to take some of the kids and go over to Harbor Branch. What is Harbor Branch? Um, the Oceanographic Institute okay, on yeah. US-1 in Fort Pierce. We were just talking how the things we don't know. We yes, <laughs> yes. And that's one of the things I don't know. Well, Harbor Branch is an awesome program. They um, are actually done by FAU uh, now. I always okay. want to say FAU card because I'm used to the autism stuff. But. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, how young of a child will you take in your school? Um, as uh, young as five. Okay. And I mean... In your in your kindergarten first grade type thing, you have one that's sixteen. Yes. So, are they harder to teach the older they get? Um, well, obviously, like everybody says, you know, catching kids early and getting them that diagnosis and the help that they need early. Early intervention is always the best case scenario, and the things that you can develop between a child who's between like 18 months and five years is a big difference from working with a kid who's past that. Um, that makes sense. I mean, you know, uh, they're moldable even right. at that age. Right. So you teach <coughs> older children. Absolutely. One being your own child. Yes. And um, is that difficult? Because you already said that he's at that age. <laughs> okay. He is at that age. And, you know, when he, we first started... Um, he was first diagnosed, like I said, when he was three. Right. Um, he didn't have any speech. Um, he just said, Dad, Dad. That was the only word he could say. Um, he didn't make any kind of eye contact. He wouldn't let you touch him. Um, so we did 40 hours a week of ABA therapy. For what is ABA therapy? Um, applied behavioral analysis. Okay. Um, which is actually the background that I come from. Um, we did three hours a week of occupational therapy, three hours a week of speech therapy. He got two hours a week of physical therapy um, because he walked toe heel instead of, heel I mean, yeah, yeah. Heel toe, toe heel instead right. of heel toe. Um, so he had to have lots of therapy and things to work through that. And, you know, he one day just made a breakthrough and started talking. Oh, wow. And we were so amazed by that. You know, we just kept pushing and pushing. You know, people always said, what is your goal for him? And I was like, I want him to be in regular classes by the time he's in first grade. Because I read that that's a big distinction. Kids who make that first step into typical classes by first grade have a lot more chance of being successful as they get older. Um, so we pushed and pushed and pushed. And actually by kindergarten, he was in regular classes. Um, but we found that the school district um, just didn't have the right supports. Well, I'm going to know that kids are not always nice to other kids. Right. I, actually, I have to say the kids were really great with him. Okay. They babied him, though. Oh, okay. Everybody babied him. He was, uh, you know, I'm not just saying this because he's mine, but he was adorable. He had those perfect little ringlet curls, <laughs> and the girls just pawned over him. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it hard because he is your child? It does make it a little more difficult because he's mine, obviously. So right. he wants that mom attention. And if I'm working with one of the other kids or something, you know, he sometimes will come up and interrupt and be like, hey. Uh, like, what about no. me? <laughs> does, he, does he have the thought of what he wants to do if he gets older? So, um, well, you know, of course, when he was younger, it was Batman and Spider-Man. And now he's gotten a little older. And now he wants to be a YouTuber. Like every kid. Right, right, every kid. But then kid. I get old, and then we want to be Batman and Spider-Man again. Right. Okay. So his backup plan is police officer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, okay, so if you don't have a dream, you'll go nowhere. Absolutely. Okay? You know, that's, to me, the most important thing. So you have two other children in your class. Yes, sir. Are they functioning the same as your son? They're high-functioning. Um, both of those kids. Um, so I have, like I said, the higher kids, the kids who are working more on like middle school and high school curriculum. Okay. Now, 
Then you have the middle class. Okay. Who teaches that? My husband. Okay. Is it harder to teach the the early class, the middle class, or the one that you teach? I don't know. I like all those kids. I do. I've always, like when I worked as a registered behavior tech in ABA, um, I always like to work with the kids who didn't talk yet. It was always one of my favorite things to do was to develop a speech program and things because I saw um, how my kid came through that and right. learned to speak and learned to communicate with us. And I know that that's, you know, the biggest challenge for children is learning to communicate um, because that makes a big difference. So I always like the little ones and working with those kinds of things, but I like my older guys too. <laughs> and then the middle guys, I actually work with them on reading. Okay. So I do get to teach them one class out of the day, and then we come together, you know, a couple times during the day to do different things. So I get to kind of work with all of them. Basically, what's the percentage difference between males and females? Well, I can tell you in our school, we have three girls. Okay. Sorry, four girls. We have four girls now. Are females easier to work with than males? So my girls, once they hit puberty, they get a little more difficult to work with. That, that <laughs> autism, Down syndrome, or regular, it doesn't matter. Once you hit no. that time, okay, it's a nightmare. <laughs> okay, my, my daughter's 35 now, and I remember that 13 to 19 years was a nightmare. And I'm sure my mother would say the same thing about me. Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that puberty thing with girls, once they hit that, that seems to be a big big change off for them. Um, the boys, while it's still a difficult transition period for them, it doesn't seem to be as hard on them. Um, we definitely see a big increase with girls and behaviors and things around that time period. So, so because I'm older than dirt, I, I know through my life that I think women are amazing. And I think that the motherly instinct is embedded in most women. So probably 90 95 percent of women have that in them do people do women on the spectrum have that too because it comes at a, a young age okay between playing with dolls and uh, uh easy bake oven and, and stuff like that do do you see that in children with special needs um i can tell you that my niece who attends our school she is extremely like the little mom around there. Um, <laughs> she's actually just turned 10. But um, I know like anytime anybody, if she feels like anybody is picking on, you know, because some of our higher kids will kind of pick at some of the lower kids and we have to, you know, we are doing no bullying tolerance. Right. And that's in regular school too. Don't think that it's just your school. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's everywhere. All, it's it's worse everywhere. actually in regular school. I I'm think. sure. Um, but she like will absolutely stand up for all of them that she feels like are not getting the attention that they deserve or if they're getting picked on more than they should be like she is quick to be like oh no <laughs> she in the middle she is she's in the middle group okay so i let's just say i have a child on the spectrum going to be five years old i call you guys up do, do you evaluate this child absolutely so we start off with um the program we use is called ixl um, and we start off with an IXL evaluation for each of the kids. Um, that kind of tells us where they are um, educationally. Okay. Um, and I, I really like that program because it breaks down the specifics of things that each of the kids need to work on. So even if a kid comes to us who's 10 or 12, you know, and maybe they are mostly operating on grade level, but it may come back and say, hey, but they never learned to tell time. And so that's kind of neat for us to be able to look at that and say, okay, so we have to go back and work with Johnny to learn to teach him how to tell time on a clock because nobody ever did that. Right. So I'm going to think that though you have these broken up into three pieces, you <laughs> also have this individual that you, I mean, he could, this one can be ready for middle, but still needs work here and you can put him in middle, but no, you have to give him the extra time. Absolutely. To do that. Absolutely. So each of our kids is pretty much on their own individual program. Um, depending on what they each need to work on. And while, you know, sometimes that's grouped into big things, like right now in my classroom, for instance, we're working on fractions. Um, but some of my guys are a little ahead. Some of my guys are a little behind. So we've kind of broken it down so that they're each working on their own individual programs. 
in our middle class, they're working on a big measurement unit right now. And the same thing, while he's starting them all off at the same place, they're all working with rulers and things. You know, some of them will go on further and break it down into quarter inches and half inches. And some of them, you know, if they could just do basic inches or do bigger and smaller. Right. So you, I guess it's a, it's figured out on each, each person's needs. Absolutely. But that's our educational needs. You mentioned your child didn't want to be touched, okay? And my viewers know that I was molested as a child, and I have this thing around me. Do you work on those things too? Absolutely. Absolutely. We absolutely, because I come from the behavior background. Um, we work with all the kids on things that they do need to work on in addition to that. So a lot of our kids don't have um, social skills. Social skills are always much lower with kids with autism. Um, so we incorporate, we do fun day Fridays. So if kids get all of their work done, then on Fridays we do like play days. So it gives us a nice chance to be able to work on those behaviors, like not liking to be touched, or kids who need to work on their social skills to be able to break them down into small groups, play games with them, those kinds of things so that they're getting more of that. We also um, work with the people at AITS Therapy. Um, and they are sending out somebody to work with us for um, occupational therapy and speech therapy to work on that as well. You know, I just want you guys to know that I've been around especially children, and they are, I find them most amazing. Okay, and we talk about this in the green room. But it's not, you can't look at your child if they're like that as a negative. What you have to do is you have to look at what you can do to pull that child as far forward as possible. Absolutely. To give them the best life possible. Right. Okay. We're getting the top of our time. How do people find you? Do you have a website? Yep. OpenSeasLA.org. Okay. And that seas, S-E-A-S? -S? Yep. Like the ocean. Okay. And you have a phone number? Sure. 772-202-2168. Yes. And her real name is Heaven. <laughs> okay. And I did find out that she caused her mother some hell, but... I guess that's the way it is. <laughs> All girls. Heaven, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Everybody, check them out. Open Seas Learning Academy. Yes, sir. And we'll be right back.